I would kill for a spot like this. No, it's like, insane. It's insane. So here, are like, these are like, these are like the fast right here. Uh, my name is Leo. I'm a textile artist, fashion designer, embroidery artist. Um, I mean, I, I kind of do a little bit of everything in textile, yeah. like specific, like I'd say, not. I, I, I would say fashion design is my main medium, but I would say textile design is something that I'm trying to verge, like get into and then go into grad school next is my, my next move. So that's for what I'm going to grad school for is fashion design. Uh, all right. This is our first. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to. I don't want to step over you. No, bro. I usually intro. You do <laughs> usually intro. <laughs> you know, you know. I want my shine. I want my shine this week. Go ahead. This is the first installation of uh, what we we're going to call uh, my process, where we, you know, the idea is basically to come around creators, you know, and get into their space, opposed to them coming to our space. I feel like every time you see a podcast, like they have somebody come onto their show, and we thought it'd be cooler to just go to their space. So we're here with Leo today. Uh, Leo and I have known each other since God, like probably like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. You know, back probably in the up probably, days, probably yeah. 2009, yeah, yeah sure. shout out Upchurch yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. Up, yeah. Shout, out, shout out Walker, shout out Rivers. Yeah, shout out Joe, yeah, shout I, out Joe. I, I've been, yeah, working, yeah, I've been yeah. working with Joe recently, yeah, Solid. a little bit, yeah. So yeah, we thought it'd be cool, you know, Leo's been doing some really cool things the last, you know, I mean, how long do you think you've been doing this? Like, like. So like, I would say since I was 19, like I, I was in the, I went to Western Michigan yeah. for, I guess, context, yeah. and then I was in the business school. I started screen printing and then I was like, you know, like the business school felt kind of basic. It, it felt like a lot of people were getting that same degree from the same school. And I just was like, you know, like I wanted to do something different. And when I came back to school, they told me, well, so I had this job. It, it was like an externship. Sorry, this is going to be a, like a little bit of a ramble. But so it was with Pepsi and they just had me going from gas station to gas station. Like, like seeing like, do you need a refill of Baja Blast? And I was like, like, cause they had the Baja Blast and cans. That was like the fun. That was like the the spin on it. It was like we got Baja Blast and cans. I was like, I, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, like, and oh, and, and I was like, I, I don't, I don't want to do this for a living. So I went back to school and I told them I was like, that was a joke. Yeah. This is what it was a sales and business marketing degree. It was like the only sales program sure. in the country. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's a cool angle on it. Like, yeah. and I wanted to sell clothes, but I wasn't. I didn't know how to make clothes. I was screen printing a little bit, but yeah. went back to school. And they told me I could be sewing the next day if I changed my major to this. And I was like, I'd never sewn before in my life. And so I'm like, I just turned 19. And I was like, okay, like, let's give it a shot. And like, I'm the only guy in the program, uh, only person doing menswear, yeah. only person without experience. Like, it was so very, it was like a lot of anxiety before. Like uh, I mean, there was anxiety, but it was like a new experience yeah. for me. It was like, it was like I had nothing to lose. I yeah. mean, the only no, thing that cool. I had to lose was maybe like changing my major again. But at that point, I was like, I was kind of burnt out anyways. Like my parents probably didn't have too much of like that, like much of like uh, hope in like what I was doing. At the, I mean, I was at Western. Like Western's not a bad school, but it wasn't, it wasn't this like institution. Like I didn't go, like I had dreams of like, I went to study psychology at Indiana. Like, and like I had like done, all, and then I, I started smoking weed in junior year of high school. And yeah, then, but like, goes. but the thing was, is you knew me at a different time. Yeah. You knew me ninth grade. Yes. Like, and then you would like, I kind of fell out when the up churches moved yeah, a little 100%, bit, yeah. but, um, naturally but no, they were kind of the glue. No, they were, I mean, they were my glue. They I mean, were they were my best glue. friends. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. it was like, and everybody was older. So it was like, older, it wasn't different like schools, different, different yeah. high schools. It was, yeah, I just kind of was the odd person out. Like sure. it wasn't, it wasn't like I kept up with your crowd of yeah. people necessarily, yeah, yeah. but, um, but no, but I shout out Brian Fingerly, by the way. Yeah, saw, no, I yeah, yeah. Brian shout out Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah Brian. Yeah, yeah, Brian was like my hero and homie. So it's yeah. like when I when I kind of fell out with Skyline people because yeah. that was kind of my network freshman of course, year. Yeah, like yeah. and uh, and uh, they shout just out. up and moved. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, overnight, yeah. Yeah, no, crazy. crazy. But um, yeah, but so I um I I when I when I switched my major, I was like kind of lost a little bit but sure. i remember my first sewing class i took the professors told me she was like or on like her review she was like could has potential to master this craft really? but isn't there yet or something like that and i remember reading that and being like oh yeah. wow like that was like it, that was something important for me to read because yeah, i was kind of course. like that was the kick to go. i mean yeah and she was like she was a hard professor like she didn't take it anything for like a joke and mm -hmm. she kind of became my mentor and she wrote my letter of rec for grad school going sure. into next year at drexel cool. and um yeah, and I, I think like it's been very 
very fluid since then. And I think getting out of school and kind of entering this gray period for me where I wasn't working, I had the freedom. So I had the freedom in my 20s to explore all these mediums because I, I, I mean, I want to say that I I'm privileged, I'm lucky. It, it was it, it was it was it was I benefited greatly from that, and it allowed me to explore these mediums in a way that a lot of people probably couldn't dedicate their twenties. Yeah, yeah. So I I I I appreciate like I I respect anybody who does this and who has to work full time because I haven't found that working medium. When I was working full time, I was not happy. Yeah. There was no balance there was no there was none of this and i picked this and my parents have supported me like th to this point and like i'm in my mom's studio right now and i think that if i wasn't if it wasn't for a place like this and i couldn't store my machines here and they were in storage and i'm paying 200 months like and i had to move to philly like like moving to philly like i was like moving back from la like i thought that that was a big expense sure. but moving to philly has been like <laughs> yeah, right. crazy like, no. well i think it's i think it's cool that you know, your mom is obviously an artist, so I think, you know, she well, she understands sure. it on a different yeah, level yeah, than yeah, like than if your mom isn't an artist. Well, and what right? I'm doing is like monetarily, like like there's monetary value to what I do. Of I'm course. making a legitimate product. Yeah. It's not like I'm I don't want to like discredit paintings, but yeah. like I like I believe in paintings. You hang them on your wall. Like I'm wearing something you can wear every day. Every like day. I'm trying to make and with the cut and so I'm doing. I really want to make functional kind of everyday pieces Absolutely. that are maybe on like the the higher end or on like the sure the uh, like on like a more flashy end of the spectrum yeah but i think like at the end of the day if i could pick and choose what i could make it'd be very casual like, yeah ready absolutely to wear. yeah i get that so tell us about like kind of with the last like so when did you graduate from i graduated Western? in 2018 okay so what is what is 2018 to now look like for you i mean i know you mentioned, so there was, there you mentioned was a, detroit you mentioned la you mentioned yeah else, yeah so i like, went to japan yeah, yeah i so did i did a, yeah i was in japan yeah, so tell us about that. yeah so i uh when i graduated in 2018 there was kind of like the summer period where i'd moved back home and i i wasn't really sure like it was a new house my parents had moved from obviously they were in ann arbor hills and now they're out in dexter and so um when i um when I when I came home, I just something didn't feel right, and so it wasn't like I just wasn't I wasn't I wasn't in like a a great place, uh, creatively, and just like I think I kind of floundered a little bit in that time period. But I got connected to, uh, the Bobby's old studio through Today Clothing. Today Clothing connected me to that space because of the chain stitch embroidery machine that sure. I. I wanted to learn the machine and the person mm -hmm. that ran the space had the machine. And cool. so I, I used that space and uh, learned the machine. That's probably around fall 2018. So okay. like summer, yeah. summer, I floundered. How was, the, how was the learning curve with that machine? Did you pick it up pretty easily or was it, was it like a real I had a good, I had a good mentor. I had somebody who showed yeah. me, showed me a lot about the so. machine very quickly. So I learned a lot, but I would say it's kind of a, you, you go into it blind, you buy your first machine. I bought mine from India for less. A lot of people do bought it from India for less. It was a reproduction. And um, I, because um, this is an original, this machine's from the 1940s. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we re we rebuilt it and painted it. And that's so awesome. that's that's why it's like, it looks newer. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like two tone sure. when we found oh, it. It was not in it. good yeah. condition. Yeah. But, uh, and there was old grease in it, like the way they used to yeah, we keep have, the machines. We have one. So we, you know, we do like, tents and events right yeah and, and we have this old so i'll send you a picture of it we yep. have one from like the i think it's like the early 1900s that yep. they like traced it back to but it's like an industrial one. Oh, cool. it's huge and like we fix we we fix the tents with it oh um, like oh okay oh one. i see oh i see what i know i yeah. know what you're talking about so it's yeah, like yeah. this but like, like, like they have like mattress factories are an interesting yes. thing like you go by a mattress factory it's full of sewing machines you wouldn't expect it but it's full of weird so I'm like, and they go on like dollies and they, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I'll send you a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Out of but it. yeah, I can imagine for vinyl tents and stuff, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you would need a, a big machine like that. But and when taking something like this apart, I feel like there's no YouTube videos on how to take There it wasn't, apart. there is now, there's one like kind of weird source for it. I don't really condone what she's doing with it. Like she, she's mixing parts from, these Indian manufacturers with the new machines and then selling them, but she's not claiming them to be fully original. That was the issue is people were claiming them to be fully original. I see. And then they have parts with Nike swooshes on them. Yeah. Like there's somebody has a picture of a machine with a Nike swoosh engraved into their part. Like they're That's like, badass. it's cool. Like <laughs> I want the Nike right, swoosh right, right. I full the, machine. I want the Nike one. I want the Virgil one. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like, it's not, it's not, um, it's a sewing machine. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that 
the the market for these machines new is dense. It's hard to find them and they're expensive. And the people that would think they have gold have gold and they know it. And the people who don't know what they have, you're like lucky when you find them. This machine I found for $400. Wow. That's and awesome. And they fixed it up for free yeah. because the guy who ran the space was like, we worked out an arrangement. Right now I'm kind of working it out where I, I want to, I want to pay him off. Like, yeah, I want to pay, yeah, like, I, he, I don't owe him anything, but it'd be nice to give him, yeah. ha- if I sell this machine, it'd be nice to get half the money to him because yeah. he did so much work. Like, I of mean, course. I made 600 bucks on it and I got yeah. an insane amount of work out yeah. of it. So no, that's awesome. I'd be happy that's to, awesome. I mean, I'd be happy to, uh, to, I, I think like pay for me, dues, pay my dues. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like, I'm an empath, but yeah. I, I'm also like, I'm also fully conscious of like the investment that other people make in me that make yeah. it possible for me to be here. Yeah. So it's like to pay that forward is like, sure. I get that. That's solid. That's solid. And you know, I'm meeting you now. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. totally. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Well, I'm sure you can relate for like like neutral zone, like you know, Jamal Buffer, those type of people who really looked out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get that. Did you, are you from Ann Arbor Public yeah. Schools? Yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, I went to Skyline too. You went to Skyline too. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Skyline was good people. Yeah, I mi- I mi- I honestly think that that was such a unique class of people it was. because you didn't have a senior we class when know. you came it in. So it, was it was so weird. crazy. It was, it was cool, man. But it was like it was like this Project X came out at that time, and it was yes. like and it was like people forget about Project X. You mentioned Project X yeah. to new generation kids. You're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, no, how do you not know what I'm yeah, talking it was, about? It was the COVID, the COVID iconic, generation man. killed that. Yeah, it, was, it totally like, ended that for high school. Throw a banger. I threw a banger at my house. You know, I threw a couple. Yeah, I never threw a banger. I, yeah. I one time okay one time i threw the after party to the banger yeah, and then somebody's can, car got hit somebody's car somebody's car got hit yeah, in front of the house yeah. and the the neighbor came banging on my door uh, and i was like i was like get out of my house and i'm yeah, yeah. like he was like where are your parents i was like oh we're fucked right. like, yeah. i was like we're screwed we're cooked, we're cooked. yeah when it comes to fashion like just the inspiration of all your pieces i love everything by the way but who would be your biggest inspiration it's like Okay, so with the shapes, it's like abstract expressionism from like the 1940s. But then there's also graffiti. There's like a lot of different inspiration. But it was like, there's a couple few artists like Jean Arp, Matisse, at the very beginning that I was referencing that I was like, this is like what I want to emulate. But I want to, Matisse, I was like, I want to be a little bit cleaner than Matisse. Matisse is very raw and his edges aren't quite perfect. And then Jean Arp is more of a sculpturist, but he did these really incredible kind of flat pieces that... I really read that really resonated with me at that time. And then when I was doing them, I was like, oh, this is graffiti. I mean, like, but I'm not doing script. I'm not doing like I can sometimes spell out words, but it's not it's not intentional. Yeah. Everything I do is kind of freehand and random. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the um, the inspiration for my cut and sew, I mean, I would say like Craig Green is a big inspiration, which is kind of an obscure. He's like a British fashion designer that's not as relevant in like ready to wear right now but in terms of conceptual yeah. kind of like like more like presentation pieces like and like their instagram branding is crazy it's yeah. like they'll have these big contraptions that are folding the garments really like aesthetically pleasing it's cool stuff and like his garments are have always been very like i've always taken inspiration from his style but i would say i mean it's tough because he's probably the most relevant in my head when I think about inspiration for my cut and sew work, but it, it really does come from kind of all over the place. There's a lot of historical references, but there's also like a lot of, um, a lot of modern kind of low brow references that you won't necessarily like, like that you'd think as like somebody who's like looking at it through an elevated perspective might not appreciate. Sure. But being in LA and seeing the the kind of the vintage culture there mm-hmm. and seeing how kind yeah. of blown up. Cause right now people will spend more on a vintage piece than they will it's on crazy. a new piece. It's crazy. Like a vintage pair of Levi's is worth more than a new pair of Levi's. Yeah. A Easily. vintage t-shirt with more than a new t-shirt yeah. everything yeah. it's across the board for the first time ever it's a really like oversaturated market right now that which i'm like but i'm like i'm trying to dive in head first i mean no, I, I just you made, have you have a lot you know like, i have a lot have but a it, lot. but the thing is is that it's taken me years of not using grailed years of not yeah. of not no, selling. I, have, I have the same thing in my basement it's like a whole you know it's really it's really i'm grateful for it because yeah. it feels like a foundation of something i saw i saw people in la who are making good money doing this oh, like who make a money. living i don't know that there's as active of markets in philly yeah and i don't know that you can make as much money. but the thing is is i got 30 plus varsity jackets yeah i believe that in philly a varsity jacket is more valuable than it is in la yeah i think Hell i could get a yeah. hundred bucks uh-huh. for my varsity jackets in philly that i was only yeah like that that like we're what? only it, like that, yeah. that 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 in 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 la were 
unfunct like they, there's no function to them yeah, like no, and so facts, i was kind no, of just facts. sourcing them on no, the maximum that's, that's i go to all the facts. flea markets and i yep. look for them and i'd say like that's a blank like yep. i look for blanks i really don't want any print on there any any embroidery if i have embroidery i can cover up that's cool but like anything like to like this one right here like with the 26 i don't know if you get the camera probably can't see it but like the 26 was like the only was the only patch on this one yeah and so like that to me so was kind of a no-brainer well yeah like, you can work that in for sure you can work on it I it. tried to take it off and then I realized it was glued on. And then I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> that's it. That happened. That, I have these fake basketball jerseys. They're hilarious. Do you remember when I used to have the yeah, basketball jersey collection? Of course. So I have fake. You mean Dominic Evan Anderson used to buy them from China all the time? Yeah, me and yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have, I have the like a Dominique Wilkins, yep. like a I remember, Chris, I have a Chris, I have a Chris, I have a Chris Weber yep. signed by Jalen Rose. <laughs> fake a fake jersey yeah. but i tried to take the tag off of one of them i can't remember which one it was i don't think i have it anymore i think i like ditched it yeah. but like i got like a pete maravich lsu jersey like weird jerseys yeah. obscure. But, uh, obscure i had a, I had a obscure. james harden asu jersey yeah i, I have I, some I real i have some nice about. i have some nice champion uh, ones that i think you'll i think you'll yeah, appreciate i was about to say i have like a random ass gold kings uh mike bibby jersey yeah. like i no, just thought about yeah, the day yeah, I'm like, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah i have yeah. the i have the sandy koufax jersey you know i'm just kidding i didn't oh, get that man. no but that, that would be that would be that would be a fire but uh no but i uh let me think so what was I talking about? I was talking about the fake jerseys. Yeah, but the, yeah. the tag was glued on, and I was like, fuck, I can't pass these off as real. And now I'm looking at them, like, it's honestly cooler that they're fake. Yeah, 100%. Like, Hell my, yeah. My, my Larry Bird, my fake Larry Bird jersey is fried, though. I must have yeah. worn it to some, like, state pregame yeah, right, or something right, like right. that and just totaled it. Just uh, covered it in it I'm going to cut it up and do something with it, I guess. Be it'll be, be, it'll sick, be cool. Though, to cut it up and, like, turn it into some shorts or something It's like not that. my style, but, like, it I don't know. I, I, work, I mean, I work, like, Kentucky Boy Tyler, the guy who I work with, shout out Tyler, uh the best at yeah. doing that like the best at referencing old unusable like dry rot tees whatever he can find and incorporating it into really insane garments so i learned a lot but it's a it's you don't want to steal like i've just been working with this guy for a year and a half the last thing i want to do is come out and just start making work that yeah. looks like his yeah. I feel like yeah, and I it's like that. so it, it it takes some restraint to like be like i saw that yeah. through somebody else's you almost have to make it as a one-off and don't like sell it you know what i mean you almost have to or, make or it you just and, do like, it with just, respect and you just say yeah. like oh or shout out tyler like i mean to him, send it to know? him no but it's like or just do it right because yeah. that's the biggest thing is he doesn't care if you do it if you do it right he yeah. needs to see shoddy work yeah, that's and facts. that's kind of like yeah. i i believe that i mean i was showing my work to the professors at drexel and they go you should have trimmed your threads here 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 i was yeah. like word like you're gonna hold me accountable yeah. like it sounds that seems solid, like a good solid, place to be that's solid that they're that they would i feel like i relate so much because i make music yeah and all of that is completely relatable yeah. to everything i can for sure with totally like, totally inspiration sure. like yeah i'm not gonna take that yeah, think, i'm gonna do it right though type shit. yeah i think mm -hmm. i think it crosses all all you know with with like photography even you know it, yeah, like it, yeah, it crosses yeah. all these boundaries of like of like do I want to look at a reference book and take that exact picture? Like, not exactly. I want to kind of make well, it my and own. And that's where I struggle with graphics. Like, I mean, you can show on those on those jeans right there. Like, it's like, like on these on those there. Like, like this. That's snuffy. Like, that's that's a cartoon character right there. Like, I'm not able to render. Like, I'm not going to sit here and take. The, I mean, I should. I honestly need to be. I need to be taking the time to draw all my references. But at the end of the day when I'm chain stitch embroidering them and I don't see other people embroidering these motifs and they're kind of one off. I'm like, if I'm going to dedicate the time to drawing this, I need to mass produce. I need to sell like 10 of these to make I it worth my you. time. Yeah, I and you. I don't make 10 of anything. Yeah, the only thing I've ever made 10 of has been like production. And that has killed me. Yeah. I hate production. I believe least it. favorite thing in the world, especially it. with this, because yeah. it's just, there's no, it's, if it takes me 10 hours to make a machine, make a piece, it's not 10 hours with a break in the middle. It's 10 hours of me sitting at the machine doing it. And that's like, but I, I sometimes the commission pieces have been the best pieces. I'm not going to lie, but it's like when you're doing 10 of the same piece over and over and over again, you get a little bit lost in the sauce and sure. it, it just doesn't, it doesn't quite, um, it doesn't quite feel as special. So how are you able to, um, you know, like market yourself as an artist. You know, you have a, you have a decent following on on Instagram. All you know? organic, all like yeah. no ads, no yeah, no no ask, like no like, like no like you giveaways. Know, I'm like I didn't even realize you had like you know, yeah. 3,500 followers. Like oh oh on you... oh on. Do I have that many followers on I my think so. on my on not on my professional account on my on my other one? Maybe on your maybe I, I fo you maybe I fo like, yeah. I follow a lot of people from my other yeah, one. Sure. I think I might have like 1,500 sure, on my sure. on my secondary on your, one yeah, on my like on my like business page. No, I have like 900 on my business. Yeah, I, I'm about to reach a thousand. Okay, cool. But um, 
it's no it's no no but for organic i think it's good like it's not bad always amazing when it's organic bro because i I remember when i had no followers but i remember somebody was like man you had 200 followers like organically like because i didn't have that many followers it was like an intern of mine at the time hamilton and he was like, he had the crazy dude had the craziest name. Shout out Hamilton Montgomery High House. Dude that is, had the dude that's had the, a fire ass. It's name. a fire yeah, name. That's it's gonna be ranked name. in the top five names. Name. In my yeah, head. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a fire. it's a really good name. Yeah, yeah. I think and Furious so, is still number. But he was like, he was like, Furious? oh man, you got two hundred organic followers at the time, and I was like, yeah, I guess that's pretty yeah. good. And like now that I'm approaching a thousand, I'm, I'm like, I've met so many people. I was in LA for a year and a half. I met so many people. It's just like. And all the people you meet that like don't follow you or that do follow you from the wrong account, you're, it's like yeah, it it, it becomes, yeah. So you have yeah, for, but but almost fifteen hundred on your on your main uh, 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 artist, yeah. On like I, it's funny because that's like my fins. I confused the shit out of that. I made my main account a finsta, <laughs> and now I have no idea how to post on my on my main account. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like I got like my trip to Japan on there. I've sure. got like a lot of different things that I've yeah. documented on there. How was but, that? I it was crazy. Wrong, it was, I, I mean, I set it up. So I, I learned from a, from a, like a, a friend of mine at Western who had done this same program. He, so he was a, he spoke Japanese, sure. American, American guy. Yeah. Um, but they, um, they, they spoke Japanese and they had gone to Japan and they'd done this workshop with this guy a Canadian like lumberjack who had m- moved to Japan in the eighties and like learned silk farming. Yeah. And he does all this really crazy stuff now. Yeah. And, um, I, I kind of arranged with him like in advance, I was like, I'm going to come to Japan, but I need to do this. Yeah. This is the only way I'm coming. Yeah. And he was like, okay, it's this much money. I was like, Holy shit. Like, I can't like, I, I don't know how I'm going to, how am I going to afford to, how am I going to do that? And it was like, if things worked out, I figured out a way to get out there. I, 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 it was a 10 day workshop with him. And then two weeks of like kind of self-guided textile like workshops around Japan and just like shopping and I was there for a month. Yeah, a month exactly. And um, and you get this JR pass. You get this train. If you if anyone goes to Japan, hit me up. It's you take the JR train. You get this JR pass for one month, and it's sure. like it's pretty expensive, but it will make it gets you everywhere. It gets you everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it gets so you it's worth it. You could get across the whole country if you needed oh, to, cr- and like wow, and crazy. like the trains are pretty like it's it's worth it. It's yeah. pretty comfortable. Um, but uh. Japan was great. The workshop was incredible. I learned so much. I mean, I made a connection for life with the guy who ran the workshop. I mean, turns out we were like, so he was like adopted and he was looking for his family. And so he was Canadian. So I have Canadian family from the same place as him. And he was tracing his lineage. And he was like, I think we're related. And he sent me some, some name. I was, I was like, I was like, that's insane. Yeah, we're that's related. Like, yeah, that's... I don't know. I don't know if I believe it, but at yeah. the same time, it's like, if it came up, like, yeah. Hey, I'll, cool. hey, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take. Yeah. But uh, Cousin, no, but but man. it's like, but it was like, it was like ten days, best three meals ever I've ever eaten. That was my next question, uh, bro. I mean, when I was on my own, I didn't really know what to eat. Yeah. Like, I wasn't like, I wasn't that yeah. educated. I'm not like, I mean, I just lived in Torrance, which is the Japanese community of LA. Okay. for the yeah, last yeah. year and a half, I have a better idea of like what's good soba yeah. noodles, what's good. So, like, what were the dishes that you that you had? Like when I was those best three, the best say, three. Yeah. I mean, oh no, it was every day. It was every day. Oh, you got breakfast, lunch, and yeah, dinner, and it would be it would blow your mind every time. Yeah. There was this Brazilian sausage his partner made that was like insane. It was yeah. so good. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe yeah. it. I ate so much of it, and I wasn't even stoned. I couldn't smoke, so it yeah. was like it was insane how much of this Brazilian like meat. It was crazy. I don't even know. That sounded weird. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you still smoke? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I mean, as a creative, I mean, it's like I'm not drug testing for any jobs or yeah, anything no, like I that, that. But it's like I got to be like conscious of like not like I am like like not letting it become like too much of my off time. Yeah, like I yeah. think like I it's a slippery slope. It's a, and I've 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 slipped down the oh, slope. I've been slipping down it since high school, yeah. but uh, since middle school. Even. Yeah, yeah I ain't gonna lie. I'm with that not to an old crazy, crazy. crazy. Yeah. no, crazy, I'll no. Crazy. I mean, no, I got caught. I got caught by it. They know. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I don't. I'm not outing myself here, but true, it's true. like, and they know now. But it's like I keep it separate from everything. Like I may live in my parents' house right now, but they don't see me smoke. And yeah, it's like it's a respect it's like, thing. It's a respect thing, and it's like I don't want I don't want people like barking down my neck like are you stoned like yeah. what are you doing like it's like i'd rather be some like ambiguity to it because yeah. it's like i don't ambiguity like Absolutely. i don't i don't no, really I need you. to like um, well i think it's it's uh, we, we, we've talked about it on the i mean it used to be a, it used to be a big defining part of my personality yeah. and i think that as, yes, i think that yeah. as i've yeah. as i've grown up i've like wish i would have gone into it maybe financially yeah. like it like as like as i see it as like i see a lot of friends who are like really successful and like various like my the guy who 
who got like my my caregiver for a long time like great great guy like super successful now like doing a really good job and it's like i i really i really um well they had the foundation for when it went legal and it was just like boom cool i was already growing totally no totally but i also think it's just like the foundation of knowledge like yeah i don't know like it's like you learn so much and it's like i i know a lot of stuff about textile things but i'm sure if i would have taken two percent of that and put it towards learning how to grow weed maybe i'd be in a enough more financially solvent yeah. place right now we'd but be in the middle of this was all weed. i will say this i will say this selling a thousand dollars worth of weed is probably a lot easier than selling a thousand dollar jacket oh I believe selling a thousand dollar jacket is pretty tough it's, I believe and, and it's the amount tough. of times i've like gone to the dispensary and spent like 250 bucks and been like well that well, was fucking yeah like, you know like, you think about it i waited three know, weeks to sell those shorts and now it's gone in five seconds i, I mean honestly like it's amazing that my stuff is sitting. I feel like I, I don't want to sound pretentious about it, but I feel like the work that I'm making is special. Yeah. And I feel like it's just it's, it, it, right I feel like my price point is so high right now yeah. to almost deter buyers online. And that almost like it, I do it intentionally because when I see right. somebody in person, I want to give them a deal. Sure. When somebody's in corporate, like, like, like actually like experiencing the garden, if somebody's buying it online, I want them to be serious. Yeah. I've had one person buy something off my website and he knew what he wanted. He's bought, he has a collection of my stuff. Yeah. This dude in Arizona, oh, awesome. like he has every, every piece I did for Kentucky boy, Tyler. Yeah. And he's got like, a, a custom hoodie like two pairs of shorts he's balled out but it's yeah. like but like i don't expect people to buy my stuff on my website no. i don't know why i have the website i should just have a fake web store that's like sorry like yeah like, right. like you get yeah, like, yeah, right until you're putting your, doing maintenance right now well, please yeah. bring your social security number yeah. i'll get right back <laughs> no, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no i'm not i'm not scamming but <laughs> no but it's like it's one of those things where it's like i wish i wish that I'm going to start doing it with my vintage. I'm going to, I'm going to, when I get a permanent space in Philly, I'm going to open. So I have this idea right now, pending title, whole cloth, Sure. but other idea, cloth whole, cause sure. it kind of sounds like asshole and like in vintage, yeah. you kind of want to be a little bit of like, a, like, yeah. Hey, fuck you yeah. in Philly. I'm yeah. going to have to be oh, like, yeah, I'm going to have to be like, that I'm going to have to be a bit of a cloth. Hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but right now it's right now it's, uh, it's whole cloth. Cause I have the darning machine over there so I can mend denim. So it's like, I want to kind of brand like everybody has their own, like, no, I think that's dope, man. I think, and I so think, I'll I'll make an Instagram for my vintage. Well, there there needs to be vintage adjacent too. There needs to be like a lane where you're like, you know, you can you can. I mean, you know it because I do it too. It's like you're, you know, you can go to the flea market and find some Grail, but then you know you end up sitting on it. It becomes overwhelming. After I mean, for a while. me. I mean, honestly, for me in LA, it was kind of overwhelming because I lived in a studio. So every time I like my clothes racks would fall off the walls because I'd put so much. I put closet rods. All, my whole apartment was just closet rods but i didn't hang them right i didn't hang them into studs and i didn't hang them with you just put them in loose i mean like at first i did and then like they worked for a second and then they all fell down and then like and then like i put them in with with the whatever you call them like the load bearing like the spring guys and uh and then those ripped out and then like i was like what the fuck I, like I'm doing something wrong, and I just kept I kept figuring it out, but I kept putting them in the same holes. Like it was like because yeah. it wasn't move like it over six inches, move it over like, six inches. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yes. But it never fell again. But no, but I'd buy I'd buy these jackets, and then suddenly my whole and then I have four clothes racks in the middle of my apartment, and I like live in this small space. It was like it was crazy, but I just kept buying things. And I, I'm in Philly. I want to curate, so I have a storage unit in my apartment where I can dedicate to my vintage. And I have a studio in my apartment on the first floor that I was like, that will be like my chain stitch space. So oh, I, I'm really, it, I'm really set up in this next space. So I'm yeah, excited. that's going to be oh. sick, dude. And like in Philly, like it's not, I don't know, Philly's like, like I lived in Detroit. I lived in Southwest Detroit. I lived in, where else did I live in Detroit? I think I just lived in Southwest. Okay, so I lived yeah. like, like yeah, Mexican town. Mexican town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it was cool. But it's like, I remember like one night, like, I was in bed and like my building got shot up on the side. Like, and I'm leaning against that wall. Yeah, like in bed, I'm like, like, holy shit. Like, that's not great. And then like the, they taped off the front of my house and I was like, fuck, like, I can't yeah. leave my house. Like, yeah. what the fuck? But, Sorry, but it's like, but it was, it wasn't in my head. I wasn't like, I'm in danger here. Yeah. Like in Philly, I don't know that it's like going to be worse, but I'm living in a, in like an apartment building. Like, sure. it, like I don't yeah. have to worry about packages. It should be fine. Yep. Like, I don't want to generalize Philly as like a dangerous yeah. place, but it's like, I mean, you, you hear the story, but also I'm living, right? Place. I'm living, I'm living, I'm living. So Trank, the, the Kensington, like Kensington in Philly has this Trank issue where it's yeah. like fentanyl, like yeah, it, whatever. Yeah. There's, it's like the epicenter of yeah. this epidemic right now. 
I mean, it's on, it's, you, you go down straight down my street and you take a right and you're there. You're right there. So, but I mean, I'm sure it's very similar to Detroit where there, you have pockets. It's like Boston where it's like Edison there. where it's, yeah. no, it's like, it's like a nice neighborhood yeah. in the middle of yeah. Detroit. Like that's kind of any, that's any big city. It seems like yeah. now, you know, I'm sure LA totally. was very similar. Like, yeah, like, totally. No, one, totally. Of my, one of my very good friends, like grew up, grew up proper in LA and like he, I mean, LA in Torrance, I was living a suburban dream. I had a oh, guest right. house. Yeah. It was, ri- it was ridiculous, but I didn't. Okay. Imagine, imagine like they tell you like you can have a really peaceful life, but I want you to move to like Traverse City. Yeah. Like I want you to like move yeah. like like somewhere but, like, remote, weird. Just move, move far as hell yeah. away from your yeah, foundation. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then like I want you to work like in like Detroit or like like that was it wasn't it wasn't like I was dr- tr- driving ten hours, but I drive to Pasadena to work for Tyler. No, that's I drive an hour and like it it wasn't it wasn't and in uh, LA traffic. I mean, it, it, LA traffic. No, it's no joke. And I'm like going from like Long Beach all the way. Like it's like it's not. I'm but it was perfect placement because I was close to Long Beach Flea and I was close to Rose Bowl Flea, and that was all I did. All I did was go to flea markets. It wasn't it wasn't like I was living like uh hey. You find that like Rose Bowl was like crazy overpriced and everything, or did you? No, but you find the varsity, you, like, you would ask people and, like, you'd be like, oh, that's ridiculous. But it's like you find the varsity jacket for, like, 40 bucks. You're like, oh, that's a good deal. Like, I, could, I could chain stitch this and make this worth 600 bucks. But at the end of the day, it's like, it was a lot of $50 purchases. Like, I'm not yeah. going to lie. Yeah, like, no, I'm not going to tell you how much I spaid on, like, specific pieces just because it's like, yeah, that. Right. I don't want to like, out myself. But yeah, it's like, no, at the like end it. of the day, it's like pieces were, like, if it was more than 50 bucks, I'd yeah. kind of be like, you know, like. That's a lot. Like, like that's a lot yeah. for me to spend on a vintage yeah, piece. Okay. That, but sometimes but, I got. But I, I've no, but like, like the um, pull out that satin jacket in front of the hoodie, the black one. No, no, it's a black satin jacket. That one, I paid, I paid two, I paid two something for that one. Like, I think it was like two fifty. That bitch is tough, though. Yeah, but I but mean, like, I think you could. I mean, but no, but I've, I, I, I think it's on my website like, for one thousand two hundred fifty or something like that. Yeah, so it's like, and did I do a thousand dollars worth of work to it? Probably not. No, but, but at the end of the day, do I want somebody to buy that piece? Fuck no, because that's a show piece. That's a piece <laughs> that's that I can like, I can like, I can put it up. Like, now it's if like, somebody now if somebody messaged you and said like, hey, I saw this piece on your website, for and like, I know you know, I I, lo- I watched the podcast, I saw you pay yeah, two fifty right. for it. I want it for five. I'm I like honestly depends on how my financial situation yeah, is yeah, at the like, time but uh, i buy this for eight and it's like i mean you'd be surprised at like like i sold a i sold a sweater to this woman who works for it's a company called production club so they do the super bowl in la they do a lot of these events but so i got like guest listed to the guy who created minecraft's birthday party and it was skrillex jamie xx dj set and it was nuts. It was cr- at the LA Coliseum, and it was like a private party, oh, free drinks, awesome. all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, that's." You're like, I, I, I was like, I, "That was like my last week in LA." I was like, "Sick!" I sold the jacket to the right person, yeah. but like at the end of the day, like you don't, you don't know when you're gonna sell a jacket to somebody, and when your prices are what they are. Like I've gone markets where I haven't made that much money, yeah. but I've got done markets where I made a grand. Yeah. So it's like, but at the end of the day with how stagnant the market seemed to be here and in Philly, I better make 10 K per market because otherwise like there, how do people live doing vintage? Like you have to, they don't, that's, I mean, that's the real answer. No, people here. were in LA. Yeah. Like that no, was the thing. For sure. yeah, in LA, can. like in LA. And I want to take that. Inspira- I want to so take much, that inspiration you know? though. Cause I saw it firsthand there and I'm like, why can't I do this in Philly? Why can't I go to a consignment store and show them my repertoire of things that I have where it's like, I cross the board, like, I used to have, because it by not grailing stuff back yeah. in the day, it's like you get those heater pieces. You're like, oh, wow, that's a cool piece. Like that's aged nicely. Yeah. But you also get these pieces that are like, oh, I didn't I didn't even give this to Salvation Army. So yeah. I have like all my Salvation Army buys from back in the day that I'm like, and right now's market are worth way more than they were back then. So it's like Supima cotton long sleeves, like weird shit yeah, that I'm yeah, just yeah. like, Obscure my shit. style's changed, but it's like, and it's yeah. a range of sizes because it goes back to maybe like, beginning of high school i was like five two yeah. i was not like i was you got a bunch of smalls and some mediums and some larges some XL, and, and, you know, and, like, and now i love huge stuff so yeah. i buy 2x and yeah. i buy this massive stuff and yeah. so like 5x stuff like i buy like i got this 5x military liner that's like eater when have like the military liners are so common in, in la yeah. like you see these like they're like yeah. but this is like a newer like it's not it's not like a it's not like a vintage military it's a new but it's 5x i'm like yeah. how often do you don't see it that often like it's just yeah. They just don't make them like that. So, but so it's just like a fun, a fun piece to have. And it's like, 
if I don't make all my money back, you know, like yeah. whatever, everything's paid for. I'm not in debt. I own all the garments I own. Anything yeah, coming so back to me at this point in time, I'm like, yeah. oh, it's money. Do you ever but go to like, the bins? It's like, what? Do you ever go to the bins? I don't go to the bins. I haven't ever, gone to the bins. Yeah. No, I've never been to the bins. But but I would say like for me at this point, it's like anything that I can like, like obviously like there's been an investment into these garments. Like if, I, if I'm being honest, I spent all my money in LA on jackets. Yeah, sure. Like I spent an ungodly amount of money yeah. on jackets. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But um, But coming back, it feels like, okay, I got this much money in my bank account. If I can start a successful vintage company, like vintage business in, in Philly, I can have my chain stitch operation. I can have the school. I mean, I don't want to take on too much, but the vintage is like, it's it's stagnant events. You just like, if I got the storage unit in my basement, I just yeah. pull up, got the car, yeah. pull up to the spot with the rack and yeah. try and sell some stuff. And if I if that can bring me money at this point, I'm like, yeah. sweet. Because Yeah, there's a lot of people who make, you know, they, I, I don't know if they make a good living doing it here, but they make a I mean, living. I think the way you make a living doing it in, LA is you lie on yeah. your taxes. Oh, for <laughs> like, sure. yeah, for, like, yeah. no, like not to out anybody, yeah, but I no, swear to God, no, sure. everybody who like is like making it in LA, like yeah. there's no way they're doing their taxes right because it's no. like no. But but I don't think that they're worried about it. No. I don't, like I mean, well, because they they might have a job where they're you know they might have like a little stupid nine to five that they do you know three times a week and that's what the government sees because you know you can hey, don't forget that. don't forget you know, a shout out to everybody who puts an emoji in the Venmo purchase yeah. whoever puts Facts. shirt can go fuck themselves fully, the, fully. You know, that that's not yeah it's not. It's not, not the vibe. I've done it before, and then I'm like, oh, I'm an asshole. Yeah, like, no, I just, real. I just. Tax That's the thing, you know. If, if, if I, okay, uh, Leo, I really love this. If I give you nine hundred dollars cash, it, it makes it makes honestly, you're not honestly, go it makes tell no, the government that you know. No, you're no, like, no, no. Of course not. You? No, of course not. No, but it's like I honestly, for me though, I'm looking to go legit. Like I yeah. want, I want to, like be. Like I want my orders to come through my website. Oh, like yeah. I want, yeah, I want yeah, it to be should, like I want it. I like I would like to have. I would like to have my my uh, financials a little bit more yeah. like proper. Yeah. And I, I learned this in LA. I mean, I worked for a big company in LA and I learned a ton. I got my ass kicked. It yeah. was tough. Who'd you work for? Uh, okay, do you want the juicy details or sure. do you want the name of who I worked for? I want the juicy details. Okay, time. so then I won't say the name of who I worked sure. for. Sure, yeah, yeah. This will be not funny. This will be funny if they, yeah, yeah, yeah not yeah. on camera. It would be funny if they watch this. They might, their wife might watch it. But, uh, so I moved to LA for a job. I got an internship, but it was kind of like a, like, it was just kind of like a straight up, like, yeah. like, oh, you're hired. And I was sure. like, I'm going to work for you forever yeah. because I'm like, my and head was in the clouds. How did you find that? Just Instagram, like yeah, they, they posted, they were say, hiring yeah. and I, I knew them through, I knew of them through a store in, in Ann Arbor. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. And man, like, it was just like, I, I went out there to be a, to, I'm a designer. I, I'm a pattern maker. I'm a sewer. I went out there and he like kind of thought I was this wonder kid. He put me with the sample team and the the pattern maker, one person for each. And the the sample maker went to Bunka Fashion School in Japan. So they're like a legend. And then the pattern maker was just went so hard. Like they could do anything. Both fluent Japanese. Everybody in the company was fluent Japanese. I I can say sorry in Japanese and I can say goodbye. Yeah, used to that. I can say like, sorry and goodbye. Yeah, they taught yeah. me goodbye. It took me a while, but yeah. I learned I learned goodbye. But um or like see you later. Yeah. But uh I um I get this job and I go out there and he puts me with the 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 really small team in the back, pattern making sample sewing, and immediately I fuck some shit up. It just yeah. it wasn't it wasn't right. And he goes, yeah. you know, like not a wonder like, kid. You you're not a wonder yeah. kid and you don't speak Japanese, so we're not yeah. gonna train you. And I was yeah. like, you know, like that sucks. And so then I was doing inspection for this guy spends a lot of money on inspection. One thing I'll credit him for is this guy spends like, I mean, if I'm like auditing his business right now, but he's got like six people doing inspection full time yeah. all week. Like it's like, it's great. They're flipping the garments inside out. They're checking everything. Like they're, they're making sure there's no mistakes, but it's like, that's like, you add that up. That's like 15 an hour per person oh, yeah. minimum. No, that's a lot. That's like, that's like almost, uh, almost like a hundred. Like they might, be, he might be paying like, like a little bit less than a hundred an hour just on inspection every second that his business is open. That's a lot of money. But so he puts me in inspection, and so now I'm doing inspection, and I don't really love it. I mean, it's like I came here to be a designer, and now I'm flipping garments inside out and looking at some details. And of course, I have a good eye for this stuff. I sew, but it's like this isn't what I came out here to do. Yeah, well, yeah. But eventually, this uh, a one one of the guy one of the salesperson's visas expires and so they go to japan they go back to japan 
and he needed somebody to fill in this role. And he had just pitted me against I'm another. There, so there was me, and then there was an intern who, if you think about it, probably wasn't the best fit just in terms of the way he ran his business. This person was very socially conscious. They were very, they were very aware of their like autonomy as a woman and just as like a figure in the space and how they could influence the space. And he was kind of clueless to this. And he was not, he wasn't good to the, to his employees all the time. And so like, she's she tells me she's like he's a misogynist he's this he's that and my head's in the clouds at this point i'm like i just started i'm like this guy's the best yeah, this yeah. is gonna be sick like, he just nah, me out to the line. Like, i mean it wasn't me. like that i was like yeah. oh you just you just shot on my reality yeah. because i could see that there was obviously something that and i don't believe at the end of the day i just think that the japanese work ethic and the boss relationship is so different very than different, the u.s very different yeah. and we u.s people don't have a thick skin and there's a high expectation. He does incredible things. He is a he is a fantastic fashion designer, and his influence on fashion is timeless. And I respect him for everything. But at the end of the day, for me, like like let me go a little bit further in the story. But so I'm doing inspection. The 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 guy the salesperson leaves. I end up doing sales for a backpack company that that they own. Maybe somebody can do the can figure this out. Can do the math on like yeah. by oh he owns a backpack. I'm like I can figure this out. But I won't say their name. But um. And I'm doing sales for the backpack company, and like, I sold a good amount of bags. But it was like the or, the, of course, I wasn't like scouting sales. It's yeah. like he had pre-existing stores that were purchasing the bags, and they kept. And I, I was doing co correspondence with them in production, but, but like, I don't know if I should. I won't say this, but it was just like production wasn't the way I wanted to do it. I wasn't seeing it firsthand. I wanted to witness the factories. I wanted to see all this stuff. He had other people doing that. And he was like, you're not going to get there. And I'm like, well, then why am I here? And uh, it was really tough. And uh, it, it, the sales part of it was I was learning Excel. I'm like, and he's like, you better not make a mistake. And I'm sitting right next to him every day. And it was just like, it just ate at me. My The top of my neck was just killing me. I just was like numb. I was just like, I was stressed. I just yeah. was not okay. And I, I, I just was totally kind of like over getting... Cause he was beating me up. Like he was like, it was like a verbal thing. Like I was just like, and he might not see it that way, but I think anybody who worked there could vouch for me that it was like, it was like, he would like aggressively lay into you in front of everybody. Or if you would make a mistake or create a miscommunication, which is easy when everybody is fluent Japanese oh, yeah. and doesn't speak great English, that's on you. And like, why are you doing this? Like, what are you doing? Like very, that's like crazy. very like, but like at the end of the day, like, I learned a ton. Yeah. And I don't I don't regret the experience for anything. Yeah. But I learned good business. Yeah. I learned how a proper business is. I think is it's run. important that you that you have that takeaway is that like, you know, you say, you know, this, this, and this happened to me, but rather than, you know, being a victim to it, you're if, just he hears, like, if he hears it and he's like, like, Oh fuck, hey, fuck bro, if he hears this and he's like, fuck Leo, like, yeah, oh whatever, like whatever. you weren't a good employee, like, you know what? Like I, I worked my ass off for I the tried guy. My best. I tried my best. And at yeah. the end he wanted me to stay and I didn't want to stay. He yeah. didn't garner a culture that made me want yeah. to stay that yeah. gave me the idea that i could be a designer for him that right. gave me the idea that any connection i made yeah. for him would be valuable for me in the future sure. and that he wouldn't shit on me yeah. in my next yeah, like trust it, it just like no but but i and the thing is i i got a drink with him on my way out of town like on my the last thing i did another intern who replaced me yeah. kind of organized yeah. drinks yeah. between me and this him. was just a few weeks ago right uh maybe like a month ago yeah, yeah, a yeah, month yeah. ago or so but um and it was cool. It was fine. It wasn't anything bad, but it was like, I could tell that he doesn't, like, I want to prove him wrong. Sure. Like, he doesn't believe yeah, in that, me he's or. He's that guy in your life like, that you're like, I'm going to. Well, the, the other intern, the other intern, like, shout out Jesse. Like, I don't, I don't want to like, yeah, I, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to, I'm not even going to say the story, but yeah. like, it's just like, he just said something that was like, I was like, fuck, like, yeah. come on. Like, yeah, that's, that's not, that. that's not the case. Like. Yeah. You need like, the motherfuckers though, man. That should make you go harder. Yeah. No, for sure. And yeah. I think that like, I think that I respect him for everything he's done and it wouldn't be possible if he wasn't here yeah. the way he was. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think I was the right guy to, to, to do well, it. Well, it's, you know, like, it, I think it, it's... You, but it it's was like, it was like when I, when I first got the job, it was like, we're going to Paris. Yeah. We're going yeah, to yeah, Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to all these places. And it yeah. was COVID. Like, no, yeah, we didn't go like, any, we didn't do anything. We're not doing any like, of that. Like, none of it happened, yeah. so. But I think, I think it's important to have like those, uh, there's so much you can learn about if it's what not hard not to do. Yeah. If it's you know not I mean? challenging, it's not good for you. Yeah, and that's facts, my that's my facts, philosophy on yeah. it all. Like if I'm not going through something hard, then like I'm probably not in the right room or yeah. not doing yeah. the right thing. That shit so, so much character too. Yeah. Though, like.
Yeah, and I don't always you can deal with that and just shrug that shit off and keep doing, keep grinding, keep doing your best at the job. A lot of people fold. Yeah, a lot I of ate, fold. I ate it. I ate it. He like lay into me. He lay into me. Like he yeah. would say some outlandish shit. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, 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 and yeah. I just like turn and look at my yeah. computer and I'd just be like, yeah, all right, Fuck. Dude, all right. Sick. yeah, yeah, sick. And it'd be like, I'd be like, man, if I was like sensitive, like yeah. I would like be in tears. Right yeah. now. Like, that was not. <laughs> that was not. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. It's just my allergies. No, yeah no totally no it was not it was not uh yeah I it was not it was not the right position for me and i think that if i didn't have the ambitions i had in design yeah. it would have been a cool job sure the backpacks are incredible yeah the it, honestly like i appreciate the products and a lot of the people who worked for him were great influences yeah. on me but doing sales just like in correspondence like second guessing every email you send like yeah. oh i said her name was hillary like her yeah. name was annika like yeah, oh yeah, crap yeah. like yeah. this is gonna i'm gonna get like, i'm gonna uh, get i'm gonna, gonna get tired. yelled at like yeah and nothing happens from any of it like nothing nah, like it's, it's like bullshit. it's totally brain. Brain. but you yeah. do it to yourself like i had a job i was working for uh i'll say the name of this place i was working for simplified in detroit sure for, for one day for sure. one day i was doing I was doing, I was sewing patches on hats for them. Yeah. And I did a fine job, but they didn't have the right machine for it. They had me sewing it on a domestic, on like a home sewing machine, like flattening out the hat yeah. and sewing the tag, sewing the, the patch on the front of it. And at my studio, at, at the studio I had, I was like, I got the right machine there. Yeah. I went to the studio. Like, Can I just take these home? I went, yeah. And so yeah. I took them home. I went to the studio and we did not have the right machine for it. We had a walking foot. <laughs> so, I, yeah. So I was like, I was like, we had a cylinder bed walking foot. So instead of the arm coming up like this, it yeah. came out from the side like okay. this. So you can fit the hat on it. This is the machine you want to sew patches on the hat. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. if they gave me that job, pristine, yeah. no problem. Yeah. It'd be done in a day. Then I was sweat because the machine, it has two feet that walk like this. Yeah. And like, you can't see where you're going and you got to get the patches on perfect. And so I fucked up all the hats, brought them back and they were like, these are not okay. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to take off all the patches. I'm going to give you back the hats. Don't pay me for the time I've done. Yeah. And let's just call this even. And because totally. I, I ruined yeah, all the yeah, hats. I was up. like, I put yeah. huge holes in them. Yeah. Big needle. Like I was, yeah. just learned. And they like, were cool about it. Like they were like, whatever. And yeah, it was like, I don't think I got, fire. I don't think I got paid for the day. I, yeah. I did it work, That's but I was like, I was like, I, I'm not stressing it. And it's like, they probably have a weird feeling about it. They probably yeah. are like, oh, that guy's all talk. Like, yeah, I can't do yeah. shit. But I'm like, you know, I don't really care about people who think that I'm all talk because I do it myself. And so I yeah. can prove you wrong. But I also think that anybody who, um, like, this is what I will say for anybody who wants to get into fashion. Sure. Um, do it yourself. Yeah. If you want to do something right, you have to do it yourself. 100%. If you want to learn how to, if you want to own sewing machines, know how to fix them. Yeah. If you want to, if you don't want to do it yourself, don't. Yeah. Don't touch it. Not saying don't touch fashion, but just pay up. Yeah. It costs a lot of money. Yes, it You're going to spend a lot more money down the line trying to do it without doing it yourself. If mm -hmm. you do it yourself, my overhead is practically zero right now yeah. because I- You have everything. I have everything. I yeah. mean, my overhead when I move to Philly will be different because I'll obviously be paying for a space. Of course. But right now, physically, like I own the thread. I own yeah. the machine. I- I I don't need to contact somebody to fix my machine when things go wrong. Yeah. Like I, I sometimes I do, but I have those people, and it's like I built those relationships over time. Sure. And I would say that the people who don't do it themselves don't know what they're getting themselves into. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you get shit luck, and it all yeah, works out. But it's like if you really don't do the research, and you really don't luck. spend the time yeah. to like learn the craft and do it right, then like go be in sales. Like yeah. go sell clothes. Like don't, don't, That's like don't, fun. like, like designing clothes is a different thing. And I don't want to ruin anybody's dreams about it. But it's like, I got into it pretty early. I got lucky. I'm like, I'm super grateful that I could explore it this way. But it's like, and also getting a sewing machine isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. And like the business of fashion does, just because you're a great creative doesn't mean you're good at the business of fashion. Yeah. yeah. Like, man, so that applies music too, bro. Yep. Yep. 100%. So I, I think like there's totally, there's totally, um, there's no way for somebody to make it and learn everything you need to learn without your, their research. And yeah. like, the, the only way I think to research how clothes are made is to make them yourselves. Yeah. Because like, otherwise, like, it's, Trial a bit, and error. it's a bit, it's a bit foreign. You don't yeah. really know until you get your hands dirty and you mm -hmm. really like, I mean, not metaphorically dirty. It's yeah. not a dirty. It's not that dirty of a process depending on what you're doing. But, um, 
But it's, I just think it's like, we all have the responsibility to, like, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Yep. It's always been my philosophy on everything. Yeah. Or seek out people who can do it better than yep. you and learn as much as you can from them mm-hmm. or tap them as much as you can. But it's not about, it's not about like colonizing craft. Like that's kind of where I think people get the wrong idea about craft is they want to like colonize it. They want to be like, I'm in charge. Like I, I tell the knitter what to knit. And like, I don't know what the hell she's yeah. knitting, but like, she knows that it's going to be a, she knows it's going to be a flame, La Flame, like yeah. whatever. Like, it's like, I don't like, I like my brand's La Flame. She's yeah. going to knit a flame. Yeah. This flame doesn't look right. Why does it look jagged like that? They don't understand gauge. They don't understand yeah. anything. They can't translate to the person what they want. And the person is going to do what they can do. Yeah. And if it doesn't turn out, that's on them. And like, I think a lot of people get mad at the industry because they go there's no resources for this there's no local manufacturers that are going to help me out that are going to do this stuff but then you go to the manufacturer and hear how much it costs and you go fuck that like i'm not going to spend that much and so you put 10 years into it and you Mm -hmm. learn it like you invest way more money into it over time Uh, like you don't i don't even want to think about how much money i've invested into it but at the end of the day at the end of everything we have right now no but at the end of the day it's like there's no there's no shortcut to success. And in fashion, the shortcut to success has no longevity. You are immediately, you are pack sun off the bat. You are, you are not reputable. You, you, you like all respect to Jerry Lorenzo, but you become fear of God. You become like fear of God is great, but fear of God also has like, is like wants to be here. And they like, and because they did fog with Pax on, yeah. you know what I mean? They're down. Like, and it's not, it's not even, it's not even to say that. I'm talking right now. Not <laughs> a fact. That's a fact. That's crazy. But it's no, not, that's, it's, that's it's, so like, it's not even, like the fashion show we did in LA was great. But also, how do you do a fashion show in the Hollywood Bowl? Yeah. You can't see shit at the Hollywood Bowl. Like, I, power to him, but dude's got influence. Yeah. But like, I don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't want to do that to myself. I feel and, you. I think that the only way that I can avoid doing that is by just taking the slow route. And I learned that from the guy in Japan. Yeah. He struggled for 30 years and now he can make 30K in a week sure. running a workshop and just like, that's his life. Yeah. And like, he's like, he's earned the skills over time that are now like- it, so- it sounds like you're saying a lot of like what Kanye had to learn with like Nike and Adidas and then going into Yeezy and like being like, I want to do my own thing. But Ka- I'm going out well, here but, but in Kanye, Wyoming. Ka- and- Kanye was the guy who was so successful. He never had to learn how to sew a t-shirt. He could yeah. always no, tell the fast. person to sew yeah. the t-shirt for him. So when it came down to it, filling a space with sewing machines is easy for Kanye, yeah. but he needs a guy like me. He needs a guy like exactly who, who, or who just not to teach him to just yeah. do it. Cause Kanye doesn't want to do it. Kanye doesn't yeah. want to touch the machine yeah. and that's fine. And Kanye has more money than anybody who I'm talking to. Yeah. <laughs> like I, the people who I'm talking to are trying to do it like bare bones, like they're screen printing shirts, they're doing whatever, they're they're learning on their domestic sewing machine. Like, and it's like, they're making tech packs, they're doing all this. Like, it's not, I don't wanna like discredit the work that people do to get to where they need to be. But when you're doing it with the wrong intentions and you're not, or not the wrong intentions, but when you're doing it with no self-guided direction and it's not to get better yourself, it's to improve a business, you're not improving the business's longevity. Yeah. You're, it's a little chaotic. It's a little chaotic and you yeah. might build a business that is super successful and you might have no skills. And I saw this a lot now, like people would blow smoke up my ass at events. I'd be doing events and they would be like, oh, I do this, I do that, I do this. Or they'd be like, some of them would be like that. Other people would be like, what you do is incredible. And they would show me so much respect, so much love. And then they show me what they do. And I'd be like, dude, you have like 400,000 followers. Like what you are doing <laughs> like, is incredible. Ah, yeah. And then they're like, oh no, it's, yeah, like, it's, not a big, it's not a big deal. It's easy. Marketing is what yeah. I do. And I'm like, well, I mean, there's two sides to the coin, sure. but I'd rather be, I'd rather be like Telfar and people say, man, that guy was consistent for 10 years before he got successful sure. than be like, I mean, I, I mean, I was going to say, like, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking of the worst design I can think of. I was going to say Philip Pline, but that's like, he's, he's, I don't even know how much work Philip Pline. I can't, I can't like reference his, like, have you ever seen his stuff though? No, I haven't. It is like, like diamond, Philip Pline, like 
just like the lowest <laughs> brow, like screen it, print, fucking no, but simple. it's like, but like, but then like, but like, super gaudy, like yeah. high end, like weird, like why are you making this stuff? Yeah, still? almost like, like Ed Hardy. No, almost like um, who's the guy at Moschino? Um, Jeremy Scott. Like okay, if Jeremy, yeah, 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 if yeah, Jeremy yeah. Scott yeah. did like all black, yeah, yeah, that's what it would be, and like had a little bit worse taste. Yeah. Like I, Jeremy Scott's a great. I, yeah. I met Jeremy Scott at Rose Bowl Flea Market. If yeah. Jeremy Scott rips me off with anything, he saw my work at Rose Bowl Flea Market, and he liked it a lot. And he told me his name was Jeremy. He didn't say his full name, and I was like, okay, word. I gave him a card, and I messaged him on Instagram, so I had the receipt. Yeah. But I was like, man, like Moschino's gonna come out with these sweaters yeah, like right. next yeah. week. Yeah. And then he, he retired from Moschino yeah. actually, yeah. which is interesting. But Did but. I, I I don't I I don't know maybe maybe he found the 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 way to produce them but uh yeah I um no L A was great L A was awesome I learned a lot and I did it I, okay so the designer I work for at Kentucky Boy Tyler yeah. he's a great example of how to do it yeah. I think he learned everything he was he was ass pizzas Austin. Uh, Austin's main guy for a long time. He was showing all of this guy's work. He was kind of like, and he suffered. He put in his dues. He did his dues. Yeah. He knew how to sew. He knows how to do the stuff. He has influence now, so he can get a team of guys to come to LA and live with him and work with him and all this stuff. And he knows what he wants and he knows how he wants it done. And he knows how to explain what he wants done. And even if it doesn't seem possible, he knows it's possible because he's done it all. And he's got a really cool thing going on. He's got a really great team. And I really believe in his vision. And I think that his kind of philosophy on how he brings in a, a young group of guys and they're all really motivated and really skilled in different ways and the, what they bring to the table, uh, I think it really um, is the wave of the future. I thought that what I was doing with the company prior, before yeah. I left, tried and true, business, Excel, yeah. classic, been in business for like long time since the 90s since the 80s like the guys like it's a successful business like but is it the wave of the future no but it's a foundation for the future to be very sick and i hope that it, it has influence because the the shoes that they make and the clothes that they make, it's great it's it's awesome the bags it, it's all great but there's definitely a something that needs to be fresh with everything and i think that it's hard to define like how do you make it like how do you break you have to break the fourth wall with everything now in music in fashion every event everything has to like like blow someone's mind for them to hit that follow button for them to like it and then they have to look through your stuff and be like everything just blew my mind for them to really even resonate with you and turn on post notifications or something like that but it's like I mean, how often do people do that? I don't. I never do that. I did that. I did that today. I did that today for the first time for flea markets in Philly yeah. because I'm like nobody got back to me about, about flea markets <laughs> right, in Michigan, right, right. and nobody got back to me about flea markets in Philly. The only person that did, the, it's in October, okay. and their website is still doing June, yeah. like ticketing. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like I'll just I need I'll the notification. Later, yeah. I need the notification yep, to let yep, me know yep. when to I look get, at it. Yeah, but like that's more functional than yeah. any I'm not like, oh, I love this creator. Yeah. Follow their post. Yeah. Like that that's not but but it's just like one of those things where I think like right now we live in a time where it's like you literally have to like I I haven't figured it out. I have 900 followers on Instagram for a reason. I've had that Instagram for a while and it's good. It's yeah. pristine. Like you scroll through it. I'm like, it's nice. I scrolled through it the other day. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm proud. I, I'm you proud. You really cultivated a, I'm proud a to show people my there. Instagram. Yeah. I'm proud to show people my website. Yeah. I did them both. I mean, it's all, I, I didn't hire a social media person. I didn't hire a website builder. Wix. Shout out to Wix. Yeah, yeah. Fuck Squarespace. Because Squarespace, it's like a template. You can, yeah. every Squarespace site looks the same. Yeah. Wix, it's okay. like so raw. You can make it from blank like nothing like are you using squarespace right now yeah yeah well i get it it's easy it's yeah. great it's Shop no it's shopify shopify is yeah, shopify is yeah. not bad shopify is good but but with my wix i mean i pay it i get this discount whenever my thing runs out they always offer me this new discount sign up for five years and get your website with a shop for this much money and i'm like you know might as well just do it and i don't think about it. my website yeah. Yeah. my website of course i got the web shop before i was like legit yeah. And now I like don't, I've had the web shop for like a year and a half. Like I've made two sales. Like it's like, it's like my web shop is so dead, but people like I'm transparent about it because people can see it. Like you can go to my web store and see the same pieces are up there. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, oh, I sold out of this piece and then just stash it. It's like, 
But every piece is one off. I'm waiting for it to, and I want people to honestly kick themselves. I want people to be like, fuck, I had the opportunity to get it at that yeah. price. Yeah. But I will say this much. If it does become, I price my stuff at what I priced it at, not because I'm a big name, yeah. because it costs that much to make it. Yeah. And it's a tedious process. Yeah. And uh, I put my time into respect it. For I put your my work. time into it. Yeah. And I learned, I learned this craft 100%. and it's, that's valuable in itself. But, uh, but there's not a, um, it's not going to like, you're not going to see the $10,000 piece from me unless the craft dictates that that piece should be worth $10,000. I did have a crazy idea. I'll tell it now because I feel like this is a good time to trial it out. But, uh, so like everybody loves heroin chic stuff right now, like yeah. Balenciaga, like it's all heroin chic. Yeah. Like it's very like, but if you're going to spend 5k, 10k on a heroin chic jacket, yeah. 5k of that should send somebody to detox yeah 100% 5k of that yeah, should right. send somebody yeah. to rehab yeah, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, or yeah, it awesome. should like look so, at yeah. like it's like like I understand like the idea of like because people do this all the time it's like oh this is inspired by this so we're giving back to this cause there's none of that no. in that scene and I'm not saying that you need to be charitable with your business but I just think like that would be an interesting route to explore heroin chic charitable like like moving to half Philly, moving, moving to Philly, moving half of the funds from this jacket yeah. go to, like, like go directly to this person yeah. who is addicted to Trank yeah. in, on the streets of Philadelphia and Kensington, and they need to go get their lives together, and we're gonna yeah. put this money to get them the help Nobody that they can. need. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like I'm a privileged person. I like I'm not from Philadelphia. Yeah. How can I go to Philadelphia and be like, this is my problem now? I don't even want to go over there. No, but no. at the end of the day. I do think it's an interesting thing to explore, and I do want to see if I can maybe develop that idea. I think when the time school. is right, you'll know. You know what I mean? Where, where you know, or when the time is wrong, I'll say, you know, that wasn't. Right. And I mentioned yeah. it to somebody who lived in Philly, and they're like, "You're a fucking idiot," and I was yeah. like, "Yeah, probably." Yeah, honestly, yeah. but whatever. Yeah.